Okay, so this is the Raspad 4, which is a Raspberry Pi 4 tablet case. As you can see, it's pretty chunky, but it has really good connectivity for a tablet. Now it's currently got a Raspberry Pi 5 in there. I've got separate videos on that. And I'm gonna try the new 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5 in there, see how that works. With KDE Plasma, which I've got here, one problem is that you can't log in. Uh, unless you've got a mouse and keyboard, which is a tablet is a bit annoying. Uh, so I can type in the password and hit enter and then I'm logged in. It's designed for mouse and keyboard and with mouse and keyboard it's absolutely great. But with touch it just isn't that intuitive and a lot of things are just too small. I mean window snapping works and various other features work and the browser, you've got a full desktop browser. All of that is fine but it just isn't great as it is. Now there is KDE Plasma Mobile. Let me just shut this one down, which actually works great. This is the Chewy Hi10 X1, which is an N100, so it's a, a X64 based processor, nice and slim. And it's really shown me how good Linux can be on a touchscreen. So if I tap it, I do get the option of a keyboard. So I can tap virtual keyboard here and I can pop my password in. And as you can see, we start up with a landscape desktop and I've got all sorts of things on here. So I've got Waydroid on here, which I couldn't get to work with my Raspberry Pi. This is basically Android apps working within Linux. So you see it's launching Lineage OS and we can show all apps. As you can see here, I've got some games and I've got the Aptide store on here. But you actually don't have to run this Android operating system within Linux because that's essentially what it's doing. So if we go back into it. Uh, if I show the desktop here, so this is just running as an app at the moment. Uh, and if we say try another app, so say for instance we go for Firefox web browser and let's just do BBC Sport. You see the keyboard came up straight away. Doesn't on Chromium, you have to. Uh, enable it but uh, on Firefox it works and it's integrated into the system and it yeah it's brilliant so if I tap on the square here you can see I can seamlessly switch back into Android but if I close down Android I can also run an Android app uh, just by launching it so this Mars is installed from the Aptide store it's just a standalone Android app it doesn't actually launch the whole Android system it just runs as an Android app within Linux uh, and as you can see here, touch is working fine on it. It's nice and responsive. Uh, I've turned down the sound, but the sound is working fine as well. And I can just tap on that and swipe it away. And we've also got Linux apps in here. So this is, uh, you've got to spin this around and then try and work out which one goes where to match them all up. It's quite clever uh, and it's quite good fun, although I haven't managed to do one yet, uh, but I haven't really tried loads. But if you start opening up loads of apps as well, uh, so say for instance we keep opening so the terminal and files uh, and settings. So I've got Steam on here as well. And once they're all launched, we can flick through all the open apps. And it just is a really, really nice touchscreen experience. We've also got this dock at the top here. Oh no, I think I have to go back to the normal desktop. Uh, so if I drag down from here, yeah, so we've got all sorts of things on here, auto rotate, I've got sound controls, brightness controls, battery, screen recording, uh, I can switch it, switch it off by just basically pressing power down and it, it just, as a Linux tablet, I've been super impressed, especially as I've got Android on there as well, I'm also running Steam and I've got some games in here as well, so I've got flat out here, which I'm gonna to have to plug in a keyboard for this, but I'll show you that it's working fine. Not the best keyboard for this, but better than no keyboard. And you can see, yeah, lovely and responsive, looks great. Such a good game. It's an old one, but a really good game. And loads of other things work with this N100 processor. Ooh. So as KDE Neon works so well with KDE Plasma Mobile on this device, I thought I'd try it on the Raspberry Pi and see how close an experience I can get to it. So here's KDE Neon uh, Plasma 6.2, I think it is, running from an NVMe drive. It's the same operating system I used in my video about KDE Plasma 6. So basically in 
this video. So I've used this, I've updated it, and that's given me this newer version, which looks really nice. And on the Chewy tablet, all I did was install their latest version of KDE Neon and uh, did the same step as I'm about to do now to install KDE Plasma Mobile. So Control alt t to open a terminal, sudo at install plasma dash mobile. And yes. Okay, so there's some errors there, but we'll give it a go. So let's shut this down. And I've restarted, and we now have an option down here that says Plasma Mobile, so we can select that. And as before, if I tap on here, the keyboard doesn't come up, but now we've got Virtual Keyboard written down here. And it gives us a massive keyboard. So I put my password in, hit enter. So I've got no mouse and keyboard plugged in, which would be sort of simulating what it's going to be like in the tablet. It's looking nice. Oh, we have an error. IBUS should be called from the desktop session in Wayland. For KDE, you can launch System Settings 5 Utility. And I've had a look at this, and uh, there's all sorts of fixes online. But it's not just that. So if we tap on the bottom here, you can see that we can get all the apps, and I can call an app up like the Discover Store. Let's get rid of that notification. Uh, I can also do this to get this. Uh, sort of control center in here, which is really cool. Everything's working nicely on that. Uh, you can see all the touch screen is very responsive. But we've got some weird issue here. These are question marks instead of the sort of show all open apps option. Uh, we've got, what have we got down here? Well, that's the keyboard. So that comes up. So that's nice to see. Uh, and if we launch something that uses keyboard, then... Let's see if it automatically, you see there's loads of things on here. Uh, Firefox, and if I tap, yeah, the keyboard doesn't automatically come up, which is a shame. Uh, so BBC, Sport. So already it's, it's really not working like the X64 version, which it kind of needs to be to be a good tablet operating system. So there's there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done. So I've got two apps open at the moment. Now normally I'd press down here, which would be the square, and that would show me the open apps. But it doesn't do that. And I don't know what that one does. That just gives me a black screen. So it's not going to be KDE Neon on, on the Raspberry Pi, even though I think it came close in the, you know, some of this just looks really nice. It's really nice to use. It's very responsive, but it, it just needs some work to it. I might invest some time and see if I can play around with it, work out what that iBus fault was and so on. But I think for now, I'm going to go back to my usual one, which is KDE Plasma built on Raspberry Pi OS. So let's shut this down. So we still haven't got a way of signing in with touch, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I have a mouse and keyboard plugged in, so let's just pop the password in. And unfortunately, it, it is an older version of Plasma Mobile, and it just isn't as nice. Um, so obviously, you can see the apps are here. Uh, I can launch, say, a file manager, and let's launch something else as well. So if we slide across, launch Firefox. And let's launch something else. So let's just go with the calculator. So we've got three apps running now. We can switch between the open apps. Firefox, the keyboard comes up automatically. So BBC Sport. Enters down the bottom there. So that works. And yeah, the scrolling is working fine, although a bit jerky. Let's just go to the news site. So if I want to close the app, I can. Uh, what happens on the calculator? <laughs> that looks a bit weird. Let's call up that keyboard. So we try terminal and tap. Yeah, so that comes up. Yeah, so it is, it is working, but it definitely isn't as nice as the X64 version, which is a shame. So I don't think I would use this as a main touchscreen operating system. It's just not quite there yet. But let's put the 16 gig Raspberry Pi inside the tablet anyway and give it a test. So I never tend to screw the base on on this. Uh, I always just leave it loose and you can see that comes off super easy. 
this is a four gig model, so I just need to disconnect the cables that are in there. I have put an NVMe in here before. I'm not gonna in this video, I'm just gonna do it as it is with cooling. So disconnect the power and the HDMIs. Let's unscrew these four. It is such a cool design because obviously, you know, the form factor of the Raspberry Pi doesn't really lend itself to a tablet. Whereas the Compute Module 5 definitely does. So the just the green part of this, incredibly slim and would really make a nice tablet. And I'm guessing everything's pretty much the same height. Yeah, it doesn't look like I need to change anything with the thermal pads. So that can go straight on. And the really nice thing about these coolers compared to the official one is you can just screw them in. So it's got some plastic screws that screw it into place. Okay, that's fine. So let's pop that back in. So USB 3 and Ethernet. Slot the SD card adapter in. And let's screw that in place. And back on. This tablet's been upgraded a few times. So unfortunately at the moment for me, I don't think I can use Linux as a solely touchscreen operating system on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a shame that I couldn't get that version of Neon working properly. I might keep trying at it, um, but I think I'm going to switch back to Android on the Raspad because it works so well. So this is showing that it's the 16 gig Pi and uh, everything is nice and responsive and does exactly as you'd want it to do. And I was trying to get Fido S working. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the 16 gig variant. The same with Windows. And uh, I'm not sure what else we've had that, that hasn't worked with the 16 gig. Same with the Compute Module and the Raspberry Pi 500. They all have a newer version of the processor. And it has broken compatibility for a few things. I'm sure it'll come back. Uh, although I'm not sure about Windows because there really isn't very much support for Windows on Raspberry Pi. I have to say though, the touchscreen experience on the Chewy really surprised me. So I can use touchscreen on the login screen and it just is lovely to use. And I really haven't found anything that is annoying me or just doesn't work as you'd expect it to. It is, it's really well done. And I actually think that finally you can use Linux on a touchscreen device and not have to have mouse and keyboard and actually have a very good experience. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.